everyone and welcome to our portfolio advice live stream today thank you for joining us it's lovely to have you um, over the next hour we will be offering guidance to help you create your portfolios as part of the uh, digital submission process this year so we have academics covering a range of subject areas today uh, that will kind of go through some of the advice um, for your specific course areas so please do leave us questions as you watch so that we can answer your questions towards the end of the live stream um, so I think that's everything from me so let's just start by introducing ourselves so my name's Laura and I work in the marketing and recruitment team for the faculty of arts design and humanities uh, Andy if we start with you if you want to introduce yourself um, I'm Andy Price I'm the program leader for fine arts I'm also here uh, to represent um, photography and video um, which is also part of the visual arts cluster Amazing. Thank you, Andy. And you, Nikki? Hi, my name's Nikki. I'm the programme leader for interior design and a senior lecturer as well. And I'm going to be here representing interiors, product design and design crafts today. Amazing. Neil? Uh, hi, my name's Neil Stacey. I'm here. I'm the programme leader for BA Architecture. Here to talk about architecture. Great. Charlie? Hello, I'm Charlie. I'm here to um, talk to you and answer your questions about the graphic design courses, uh, graphic design and graphic design illustration. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. And last but not least, Buddy. Hello, I'm Buddy and I'm the Associate Professor for Knitwear and I'm representing the School of Fashion and Textiles. Great, thank you. So we pretty much have a representative who can answer any question about a course that requires a portfolio uh, at DMU. So like I mentioned, please do leave your comments throughout and we will do our best to answer them. Uh, so first, I'm just going to come to Nikki, who's going to give everyone a kind of a nice overview of portfolios as a whole, uh, some things that to include in there before we then go around and cover some of the more subject specific stuff. So Nikki, if you could just uh, give us that overview, please. OK, hi. So. Yeah, so I just want to give you a general overview um, of what you need to put in a portfolio. So I'm just going to talk you through um, some of the points I've got here. Um, so one of the things uh, students ask is, you know, why do we actually need to see a portfolio in the first instance? And the reason for this is because um, a portfolio is part of our selection process and it gives us an idea of your skills and helps us to understand if you'll enjoy studying with us at DMU. And also, really importantly, if you've chosen the right course for you. Um, in terms of a portfolio, a good portfolio should include um, quality work. So it's not really about quantity. It's about you being really selective over the work you've been doing and make sure that you're showing us a range of work and avoiding any repetition. We usually ask for around 15 to 25 pieces of work and they don't all have to be completely finished pieces of work. They can be in the development process or work in progress. Um, but it's really nice to see a range of what you've been doing. Ensure that your uh, work is laid out in an order that's easy to follow. Um, you know, it needs to be logical and uh, easy for the member of staff to, to view. Um, we usually receive a variety of portfolios and it doesn't matter if you're not necessarily studying um, a whole range of creative studies. What we're looking for in your portfolio is potential um, and that's what we'd be responding to with your portfolio. Also, if we start to think about uh, what you might be looking for, one thing I know that the, the rest of my colleagues will, will say is a passion for the subject. So demonstrating you have a passion for the subject is really important in your portfolio. Also, the second thing is drawing skills. Drawing skills are really, really important to, I would say, all of the art and design courses. And that can be in the broadest sense. And when I talk to you about interior design, I'll talk to you about what I mean by drawing skills for my particular programme. We're also interested in you um, explaining about skills um, skills that you have that are relevant to the course. Um, and this might be things about um, spatial awareness, awareness, sorry, or it might be about software that you've used that's relevant to your programme. Um, so that's really interesting if you can add those sorts of things as well. So any skills you think that you can bring to the, pro the programme um, and, and develop whilst you're on the course with us. Again, another area you might look at is um, how you might generate and develop your ideas. So again, you know, we would be looking at um, students responding to a written brief and how they actually develop an idea. And so you might put some development work in, you might be showing us a finished uh, result based on a brief that you've responded to. 
We're also looking for innovative thinking and uh, creative problem solving. Ultimately, uh, design courses are about solving problems. So if you can show that in your portfolio, that would be perfect. Um, your potential to learn as well is really important to us and your ambition for the future. Just try and show us your creativity and your imagination. So what should you put in your portfolio? I mean, that's a big question to ask. And that's what my colleagues and myself will be talking to you more specifically about. But in principle, most uh, portfolios need to include drawing. Um, you can also include elements of your sketchbook. So you might uh, choose to scan sketchbook pages. These are great for showing development work. Um, you might want to show how you've tackled a particular project or a brief within your portfolio as well. Or you might be able to evidence some 3D work that you've been doing. Um, and this might be uh, in the form of model making, for example. As I mentioned before, you might want to show um, whether or not you've got some software skills. So perhaps including things that are relevant. So maybe for architecture or interior design, you might think about things like SketchUp that you could, you've perhaps taught yourself and you want to show your ability to do that. Or it might be material knowledge or um, uh, technical knowledge, such as things like pattern cutting. So there's a whole range of things that you might be showing uh, within your portfolio. You can also show things like um, primary and secondary research. So this might be um, when you visited an exhibition or you've been on a study trip and you want to share your inspiration um, and your own interests as well because it's as much about your portfolio and your personality than it is about anything else. Show us what inspires you, and that's what we're interested in too. In most cases, you'll also be asked to include um, a piece of writing. So this is to do with um, the fact that the courses, most of them will have a written aspect, um, and it's an essential tool for designer to be able to communicate in many ways, one of those being writing. In terms of thinking about how you might present the work, um, you will be looking to photograph um, and digitize some of this for us. So think about the photos that you're going to take, you know, make sure they are of a high resolution so that they're clear and not blurred. Make sure that you're thinking about good lighting, for example. Um, and if you have an object that you want to see the detail on, that you take photos all the way around that object. And it's important that you take the best angle and you could even think about you know whether or not it would be better presented landscape or portrait um, to suit the particular artifact or object um, it's also a good idea to place objects that you're uh, photographing on a plain background and that way you're avoiding any busyness uh, within the photo and we can just focus in on the work when scanning the work, as I said before, um, sorry, scanning this time, think about the resolution. It's the same as photographing. You know, it's got to be good resolution and make sure that you can compress those files so the size isn't too large. Um, think about um, things like referencing. So if you're going to send us references to websites, please also make sure that you're showing some examples um, so that we haven't got to search through sites to find those. And then finally, just in terms of um, format, we would expect to see a multi-page uh, single PDF file that you're going to use. And this would tend to be um, limited in size to one gigabyte, ideally in, in a zipped folder so that we can actually ask, access it. But do not worry about this kind of thing because, um, you know, portfolios should be fun to create. It's something that you shouldn't get worried about. You know, we're interested in seeing you, your ability, your skills and what you can bring to the program. Um, and should you apply for a course with us, then you will be sent further portfolio advice. So do not worry, because you're going to get that specific advice to help you. I think that's everything from me. So I'd like to hand back um, to the team to see more specific details about portfolios. Great, thank you for that, Nikki. That was a really helpful kind of overview of portfolios as a whole um, that I think gives everyone a bit of groundwork before each of you will talk a little bit more in detail. Um, so I think let's just jump into some of that further detail for each course area. So Andy, could you start us off uh, just giving some advice for portfolios specifically within the visual arts? Um, yeah, well, obviously, you know, as Nikki said, the, the portfolio is representing you. Um, very much um, in your absence and uh, you're the person that we're trying to recruit and you're the person that we're um, assessing for their uh, suitability to the, the course. Uh, from the point of view of fine art it's a very long way 
from uh, level three, which is A level and foundation, to level six and then level seven, which is the MA, when people start to get their kind of artistic personality together, usually. So it's quite a long haul becoming an artist. So we're looking for um, potential in your work. Well, we don't necessarily want to see a portfolio that's full of very polished, finished things, but we do want to see a range of things that you've been working on. Um, possibly across different media in fine art. So please, if you've done some printmaking, some photography, some sculpture, um, some painting, you know, you might even have done performance work or something, uh, please don't be afraid to put it in, even if you think it's a bit rough around the edges, um, as long as you can document it well. Uh, please also put some things in that you're particularly proud of and particularly interested in, uh, but do show us a range. Uh, the other thing that's really important from the fine art point of view as well as breadth, um, is, is real depth of engagement. So, you know, don't be afraid to show us all those rough sketches and development works and, and unfinished things that lead up to something because uh, they're absolutely crucial for us in assessing um, your ability. Um, an enthusiasm and an engagement with the subject is very important, I think, for all of our areas, but uh, um, it's always useful for us to know whether you've been to museums, whether you've been to see shows in galleries and things, whether you have artists that you're aware of that, that are important to you and that you're you're enthused by. So so an indication of some of that is good. Uh, Nikki mentioned writing. Um, there is a bit of writing to do in fine art. Uh, it's not just um, you know getting on in the studios. The, there are essays and things to write. There's contextual awareness to have. So um, an example of your writing would be good. Uh, many of our students, you know, have um, different levels of, of, of enthusiasm for writing. We have a fantastic set of uh, support structures in DMU to help with that, uh, but it, but you can't get through a degree without doing some. So uh, it's very important that you, you, you show some evidence of that ability. Um, and finally, I'd like just like to talk a little bit about self-direction, because unlike many design areas, once you get up and running as a fine artist, no one is going to give you a brief. Um, briefs are unusual. You know, occasionally an artist might get a commission, but generally speaking, they make things um, off their own bat for their own reasons. Um, so if you can give us an indication that you're that kind of person, that's very useful. So some indication of projects that you've, that have come from your enthusiasm and that have been driven by your interests, I think is quite key. Um, so breadth, and some depth, uh, really important for us. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Andy, for that overview uh, of everything kind of in the visual arts world. Um, I was just wondering if you could also just touch a little bit on photography and video. Um, I guess a little bit about how maybe people could submit a video um, piece and maybe what you would be looking for in like perhaps a show reel or something that shows a little bit of the video side of things as well. Um, I'm well, still on, yeah. From, from you know, from videos, obviously, are quite can be quite lengthy things. So, um, it, if you've done a lot of work in that area, it might be an idea to show us um, a series of clips. You can you can quite a good idea is to pull certain stills out of a video so that we can see certain certain bits of that of, of that work. Um, if it's you know, if it's not an hour long, it's, if it's minutes, then then pre, please do send us. Uh, either a compressed version of the video or a link to a suitable platform. Um, I probably shouldn't advise on that here, but, you know, I'm sure you'll get some advice uh, uh, from Laura, but, you know, things like Vimeo and, and OneDrive and, and uh, even YouTube are, are places where you can host a video and uh, and send us the link. Um, in a sense, the, the, the for something like PHVP, the, the temptation is that, that what you send us in a digital portfolio um, is the work. Um, and that's what makes it a bit different from maybe sending us some pictures of paintings or sculpture or printmaking. Um, but do take that into account quite carefully about the format that the work that you're, that you're doing in photography and video finally took when you made it. So if you've made a set of prints, uh, sometimes it is appropriate to take a picture of the prints, you know, even if they're, even if they're set on a wall or, on, or in, in a book or, um, or, you know, mounted in some form, it's quite useful to see how the physical item ends up being outputted. Um, so don't just send us um, 
you know, your, your JPEGs converted into a PDF um, if, um, you know, you had a set of frame prints or you had uh, um, a collage or a photo montage uh, of work, then, then make it clear um, uh, what, the out, what the final outcome was. Um, yeah, um, but, but uh, yeah, I think, I think generally speaking, beyond that, I think uh, the same advice would go as it would be for the more finite orientated practices, you know, that we're looking for people that have got their own uh, sense of self-direction and enthusiasm. Amazing. Thank you for that, Andy. I really hope that was helpful for everyone uh, watching at home who is looking into the fine art photography and video areas. Um, As Andy mentioned, of course, when you apply, you will be sent further guidance specifically for your subjects. Any kind of queries about how to send us work will be included there. Um, And yeah, so thank you for that, Andy. Next, I want to come over to Neil just to talk a little bit about applying to architecture at DMU. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, what, what I'm very keen to communicate about applying for architecture and submitting a portfolio is that, I mean, the comments that Nikki and Andy have been making about enthusiasm for the subjects and passion and skills clearly apply to architecture, but we get a huge variety of portfolios to review. We get, you know, some applicants are on foundation courses and have an enormous amount of creative artistic work to choose from to create their portfolio but some some of applicants are um, doing a levels and quite um, academic pursuits or very academic pursuits doing maths and physics and um, etc and and aren't really fully engaged in a in a creative um, subject uh, so we seek a huge variety, um, and I'm really keen for people to hear that we we like seeing that variety. We're used to assessing very very different portfolio submissions from students from applicants. So whatever it is you're doing, just um, focus on that and celebrate what you are doing and what your interest is in, in the subject. Um, so don't worry about not having something just celebrate what you do have. Uh, and the, probably the most important example of that is we get applicants worried that they don't have knowledge of certain softwares. We are not looking for any indication of any particular software skill. Um, um, we're not looking for any particular skill set. What we're looking for is really um, interest and enthusiasm for communicating graphically you've got to clearly show an interest and a passion for drawing and communicating through the flat image if you like and now that includes photography drawing painting uh etc so, you know or whatever your 2d skill set is we want you to celebrate that and as nikki said i mean drawing is a key um key skill and we want to see some sketching ability um, and we'd ideally see some 3d um, evidence of 3d working clearly you're not going to have built a building or maybe you have which would be amazing to see um, but maybe maybe the evidence of you enjoying making things and creating things 3d is is textiles is building a garden shed with your granddad is Whatever it is, some evidence of enjoying 3D work. We're expecting it to be model work, but we don't really mind what that 3D work is. Um, and we're looking for a interest in the subject. And sometimes students uh, get in contact with us saying, "Well, how do I how do I demonstrate an interest in, in architecture in buildings? I haven't designed any architecture yet. I haven't." Um, been involved in the building of any buildings and but we're really looking for you to show an interest in buildings in the broadest sense you know we're we're born in buildings we're educated in buildings we fall in love and live our lives in buildings we do everything in buildings and one way or another you are an expert in buildings and how do you capture that and if you're not gonna um if you don't have lots of artistic work to do with buildings that's fine. We, you might be showing us some amazing figurative work uh, from a fine art perspective, which would be fabulous to see. But if you 
if you have got an interest and a passion in buildings and how people live their lives, enthusiasm for culture and enthusiasm for how people get together in various settings, um, if you haven't got clear creative outputs in that field, then we do recommend you focus on taking some photographs. It's such an easy way to demonstrate your interest in architecture. And that sounds quite flippant, but we expect you to take very careful photographs um, and, and, and tell a story in a photograph. So, you know, taking a snap of a building at the end of your street is kind of not enough, really. Just, just think about, you know, why you're taking a photograph of the building, why... Um, that building is important to you, what the people are doing in and around that building and maybe focusing on the people or the people are doing um, and try and tell a story in that sense. Um, and that's about all I want to say, really. I just um, we tend to get if we get any communication from applicants about their portfolio, it's that they're worried about what they need to include. We don't expect you to include anything in particular. Uh, we just want to see a real energy and enthusiasm for putting things down on paper and a real interest in people, life and architecture. <clears throat> okay. Great, thank you for that, Neil. Uh, I think that was really helpful advice because yeah, perhaps in architecture, it's a little bit trickier to show uh, work you've done so far that directly relates, you know, perhaps in comparison to fine art where people have done a painting. Um, so that was really, really helpful to hear about. Uh, I now just wanted to come back to Nikki, who told us earlier a little bit about uh, portfolios as a whole. Nikki, I wonder if you could just touch on the design mm. uh, cluster of subjects and some of the expectations there. Yeah, no problem at all. Hi again. Um, leads really nicely from architecture actually into interiors. Um, so I just kind of wanted to reiterate the fact that your design portfolio is obviously your opportunity to communicate and evidence uh, a variety of work. That's what we want to see. It's about your design capability and potential that we're looking for, but also to show this range of work. So, you know, I wouldn't necessarily want to see 10 life drawings but I wouldn't mind seeing one or two and then some observational drawing um, maybe of people maybe of interior spaces um, and as we said before not necessarily fully completed you know I think the development process for us is as important as the finished article so remember that your uh, portfolio is almost like a visual CV and um, it needs to document your creative skills um, you know, it's also about design identity as well, and you should take pride in creating this uh, presentation for us to look at. What you're trying to do is um, show us the impact of your work and how, how creative you can be and how bold you can be, because we just want to be impressed by you, essentially. So it's back to that passion, isn't it? Passion for the subject. Um, so, you know, so, so it's like, like architecture in some ways, um, you need to be demonstrating your passion, but you can do this through drawing. You can do this through demonstrating how you respond to design briefs. So you're problem solving again. Um, maybe some concept origination as well. But again, I've got to come back to design development. Um, we love sketchbooks. We love seeing the original inspiration, how you've developed that idea um, through the iterative process and actually come up with a final solution. So if you can demonstrate that, that would be marvellous. But also some 3D work. So similarly to other subjects now, 3D work is important to us. Um, a little bit of understanding maybe about spatial design, some model making um, would be great, even if that's just sketch modelling. Um, and again, we're not expecting you to understand how to design interiors, otherwise why would you be doing the course? You should just be showing a passion. Um, similarly, again, to architecture, you could uh, document an experience of an interior space through photographs. Um, you could analyse what that space is like or why you like it, um, why it interests you, what's different about it, those sorts of things. Um, because I'm covering the cluster for um, design products as well, it would be very similar. They'd be expecting to see drawings and development work, um, some modelling as well. And maybe a little bit of evidence around sort of understanding the function of a particular product and, and more about sort of technical uh, definition. So, you know, telling us a little bit more about your understanding about the user uh, comes into product design. 
And then for crafts, a bit more about sort of making really, um, evidencing your understanding of maybe some material manipulation. So that might be making something with a specific material. Um, I'm very keen to have a, an understanding or some knowledge of contemporary craft and design is what they're looking for. With interiors, um, we'd like to see a good level of 3D drawing, some obs observational work, but also sketch work. So you're not only showing things that you've seen and you're, you're sort of replicating those, but also how your imagination works in terms of developing concepts. Understanding how um, to manipulate materials is also good and some experimentation. So in general, um, we want to see how you generate, develop your ideas, um, respond to a brief, um, and demonstrate this perhaps in your portfolio through a specific project. Show how you've taken on board that brief and come up with a final solution. We really look forward to seeing your portfolios. That's it from me. That's great. Thank you, Nikki, just for covering that uh, design cluster of areas. Like you said, it definitely does fit in nicely with architecture. Um, but saying that, we're going to switch to something completely different now. So I just wanted to come to you, Charlie, to talk about graphic design and the kind of creative design area of portfolios. Um, I believe you want to share your screen if you wanted to. Yeah, I'm going to attempt to share my screen with you. So here we go. Well, Charlie, sorting that just for everyone watching, um, I know some of you have been asking your questions so far, um, so we will be answering those shortly after Charlie and Buddy have spoken. Um, so please do keep sending in your questions for our academics to ask to you. There we go. We've got your screen now, Charlie. Here we go. Nice to meet you, everybody. Um, so I'm going to read off this screen so that I definitely cover everything. Um, and a lot of it will be similar to what the other academics have said. So apologies for anything that um, you're hearing for the third or fourth time, but it is because it's super, super important. So why do you need a portfolio? To demonstrate your potential and suitability. It should give us an insight into who you are as a creative, demonstrate your abilities, skills, interests, and passion for your design study. It enables us to assess if you're a good match for our course. So some advice, some questions that we get all the time. What do I put in my portfolio? What will they be looking for? How many pages? How many projects? How do I stand out? We want you to be you. So the same as what the other academics have said, we want to know who you are. What are you interested in? What design work do you enjoy doing? What are you most proud of? Let your personality show through your portfolio. And this is something that we encourage on the course as well. So as you go through your projects, we'll encourage you to Focus on subjects that you're interested in because we want to get the best out of you. We know if that you're interested in the subject, then you'll put your all into making it great. So quality over quantity. The quality of the work in your portfolio is more important than the quantity. You don't need to put everything in your portfolio, only put in the work that defines you best. So what else do you include? What will they be looking for? Passion, a portfolio that evidences that you're engaged, knowledgeable and creative. Design process, we want to see more than final pieces. So again, this is repeating what some of the other academics have said, but we want to see how you got there, your curios curiosity, your decision making from mind maps to thumbnails to creation. We want to see that drawing is, um, is a skill that you have. It's important, fundamental requirement of design courses idea generation and lateral thinking that's really important so someone who will push the boundaries and create the unexpected um, and an experimental approach to materials and design is much more than a pencil and computer show us how your innovative use of materials work um, again passion i don't think we're any of us can um say that word too many times during this presentation we want you to show us who you are let your personality come through Choose work you're excited about and that you enjoy enjoyed working on. Show us your curiosity and individuality. Design process. So again, we don't just want to see the final outcome. We're really interested in thumbnails. We're really interested in process. That's something that's very, very important on our course. Um, we love sketchbooks. So yeah, please do include your sketchbook work because we love to look through that. Uh, drawing. Your portfolio should contain examples of drawing and image making in a broad sense from life drawing to experimental sketches, photography and collage. 
The more diverse, the better. We're particularly interested in drawing based uh, on objective study, colour and tone. So digital, so it's not essential for all design courses to have a digital content. For some, it's essential and some desirable. For game art, so I'm talking on behalf of game art, even though I teach on the graphics courses, game art um, and animation. Animation would like you to include the best examples of any computer-aided design or artwork that you have produced, as well as photography, video, animation, or visual effects that you have experience using. Yeah, you can send these via links with your portfolio. It would be useful to demonstrate an interest in animation techniques such as hand-drawn or stop frame and the use of design so software such as Photoshop or more advanced 3D modeling for animation. And for game art, if you've used 2D or 3D software, please include screenshots of examples of your work. We're looking for enthusiastic artists so we would recommend that you include examples of work done in your own time, in addition to school or college projects, to give us an idea of your motivation and passion. Although this is not compulsory inclusion, it is recommended to allow us to see your full cap capabilities as a game artist. So for graphic design, typography and layout, we love typography so so important for students interested in graphic design your portfolio should contain examples of this typography lettering and editorial layout design from typesetting and magazine spreads to experimental typeface design digital and sketches the more diverse the better we are particularly interested in how you marry type and image and the relationships they form things that you've done outside of your study so personal work more experimental work um, photography we want to see everything and anything that you're excited about. Um, and again, I think some of the other academics have covered this. So you can have uh, photographs of physical work that you've uh, created, digital, and you can put some links into online presence. We're okay with that, but I think there's gonna be more on that later. Um, make sure it's in a good order. So make sure that all of your work is in a good order. Um, in, again, it's quality over quantity and yeah, make sure that you're showing us your best work. We would advise against uh, fan art, anime and manga. No drawings copied straight from the internet or print. Um, nothing from, um, well, we don't want to see Tumblr, Flickr, Behance and especially Pinterest. Instagram pages are not appropriate for portfolio application formats and do not put too much on there. The um, Quality over quantity, so important. We would advise, be yourself, take pride in your work and presentation of your work. See your portfolio as a continuous project. Look to update it as you grow as a designer. And remember, we do not expect you to be the finished article. World-class designers um, are looking for potential. Be yourself, take pride in your work and the presentation of your work. See your portfolio as a continuous project look to update it as you grow as a designer. Thank you very much, everybody. Great, thank you for that, Charlie. I'm sure that was really helpful uh, for everyone who's thinking about applying to one of those graphics or creative design courses. So again, we're gonna have a complete shift in terms of the type of portfolio you might be putting together and come over to Buddy, who's gonna tell us a little bit about fashion and textiles portfolios. Hello, everybody. Well. Um, Charlie, that was fantastic, and everyone's given really good advice on what you should include in a portfolio. Um, I think it's great to remember that we're all designers too. We have our portfolios. We love seeing your work. So the first thing is, is to remember that we enjoy looking at them. I'm representing the School of Fashion and Textiles, and I want to give you an idea of the subject areas those cover because it is relevant to what you include in your portfolio. So uh, think about pure fashion, catwalk fashion, we do that, right through to creating the textiles, so fashion textiles, textiles that actually are for interiors, are for cars, are for anything to do with textiles, we do that as well, right through to fashion buying, which is the business end of, of tech of fashion, um, more the retail. So uh, you have your catwalk crazy ideas, and then how do you create them so they actually go into a range and into the shops? Um, and that, that doesn't necessarily mean high street, that could mean couture shops as well. So the whole gamut of fashion. And then we have um, 
contour. So that is, think of anything that's cut close to the body. Um, so swimwear, sportswear, lingerie, we do that. And then footwear, what you wear on your feet. We all love that. And spend too much money on it, probably. Um, so I'm just going to say drawing again. Um, when I spoke to all the tutors on the courses, the things that they all wanted was drawing. But um, I'm not particularly good at drawing. When you think of drawing, you think of um, a still life or life drawing. But we're really talking about drawing that communicates an idea. So, for instance, as a knitter, when I look at a building, um, instead of seeing the structure like Neil, I will see the grids and the proportions and I'll immediately take it into a pattern. So my drawing might be about texture. Um, if you were doing something like uh, fashion, your drawing might be taking the elements of uh, perhaps an artist, a sculptor, and perhaps reviewing the proportions, the lines, the way the sculpture swirls. You might analyse those and then look at how that would work on a body. So quite a different way of looking at drawing. Um, for fashion buying, for instance, you might actually look at trends. So you might be looking at colours and perhaps colour grouping and how that works within within a collection. So very, very uh, different drawing. What we don't want to see is, um, I think as Charlie mentioned, something off the internet like an Alexander McQueen dress and then you just draw your version of the dress. That's, that's definitely not the type of drawing we want to see. But um, really drawing in its broadest form that shows how you've researched, you've explored, going back to what Andy was saying about that in-depth looking at something. You've looked at the texture, you've looked at the proportions, you've looked at the silhouette. Um, so that's a little bit about drawing. The second thing is show an interest in the subject area. So for instance, we've got a picture up of uh, someone drawing shoes. It might be that you've taken a pair of white trainers and coloured them in actually. Um, it might just be that you're looking at uh, particular contemporary design or historical design have an interest in what people have worn. Um, for textiles, it might be experimentation with materials. It might be textile development. Um, but that interest in the sort of fabrics or the sort of uh, inspiration that uh, captures your subject. Um, I think the other thing is to say, look at the research and how you're developing it. So for instance, any projects that you've done that show 2D to 3D development. Um, and this can be anything, I mean, anything at all. But like the others, we really want to see what inspired you, how did you take ideas from it, and what did it lead up to? And um, so if you've made a, 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 a dress, for instance, or if you've made a piece of textile or a piece of weave, or if you've colored in some footwear or something along those lines, you might actually document the process and perhaps include some initial pictures of what inspired you, an artist that inspired you, an exhibition that you went to that inspired you. We're kind of trying to understand how your mind works and what inspires you. Um, what else have I got in my um, notes? So um, I also should have said that the other area that we cover is uh, all our courses are practical. So you'll be making things on all the courses or doing practical activities on all our courses. But we do have the visual communication and the contour fashion communication uh, courses that are more about your digital identity and how that is communicated. So your creative digital, your creative fashion identity how is that communicated? And for that, anything you've got, photography, art direction, perhaps an event you've been involved in or an event you've documented, perhaps as Charlie said, topography that you've been interested in, anything like that uh, would be very good to include in your portfolio. And I think finally, um, I just want to say things that have gone wrong how you've tried to rectify them, um, experimentation with materials, I think I've already said, um, and, and context. So an interest in contemporary culture and an awareness of contemporary culture. So as a creative person, um, really it's an interest in all creative subjects. Are there films you particularly love? Were there sculptors you particularly were interested in? Dance? Um, Perhaps are there activities, um, product design, um, architecture, uh, any other areas 
that um, because all the areas interconnect and actually that's what's really great about the building that we, we teach from is you can walk through all the floors and see what all the students you're doing. But we want to be interested in, um, in the culture that inspires you. So I think uh, uh, I'd really reiterate what the others say. You know, we're designers. We do this because we have a passion for it and because we really enjoy it. And that's what we want to see communicated in your portfolio. There's no right or wrong. We want to see you and your creative character. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Buddy. Uh, so just to recap for everyone who might have just started tuning in, um, we've now finished with our academics kind of going over all of the specific details for their subject area. So if you missed anything, of course, you can rewind. And at the start, Nikki gave kind of a more broad overview of what we want from a portfolio. Um, so we're now going to go to our Q&A section. So we'll be answering some of the questions you have kindly left. And of course, please do keep asking your questions and we will do our best to answer them, uh, either in the comments or as part of the live stream. So I think our first question is from Freya. It's just So Freya wants to know, when do I submit the portfolio and where do you submit slash send it to? Um, so I'll just kind of briefly answer this in terms of when you apply to the university, you will get an email uh, or maybe through eCash, you'll get information from the university um, about exactly how you go about submitting your portfolio. So I don't want to uh, give you a specific website now and it not be quite right and it may also depend when you um, apply in terms of where exactly you send it to but just be reassured that when you do make that initial application you'll be given detailed info you'll get um, specific portfolio advice uh, guidance like a document for your specific subject and you'll be told how to send it um, I think it will be something called um, send a big file or something like that, which basically is a way to compress your work and send it to an email address. And then our admissions team pick it up and send it across to our lovely academics. Um, does anyone want to chip in though in terms about the when side of this question and when you might want to send in your portfolio or maybe more specifically at this stage when someone should start working on it? Has anyone got something to add on that? Oh, I think send it as soon as you as soon as you feel you're you're ready um you know we're very happy to look at it very happy I, th I think perhaps they normally get start being sent in about january ish onwards i would say would everyone do the others agree with that and that gives you a chance to have a good range i think i think if it's sent in sort of before then then really uh, you haven't had a chance to develop your your work would, would the others agree with that yeah. Yeah, great. Well, thank you for that, buddy. Um, so yeah, obviously there's no real, well, there will be a deadline in terms of a final cutoff point. Um, but yeah, you have many months to send it in. So really when you're ready, make sure you don't rush it, but equally you might want to start on it uh, fairly soon, just so you're not kind of <laughs> rushing it over the Christmas break or something like that. I think little and often in terms of putting it together might make it easier for you as well. Um, so our next question now, is from Sahira, who has a question for Neil specifically. Uh, Sahira says, I want to study architecture next year and have a great passion for it. Uh, and I study a digital art and design course at the moment. What if I don't get the grades? It means I can't come to DMU. Um, so Neil, I know you can't uh, predict the future, but I thought you might want to offer some reassurance here to Sahira about this. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Be optimistic. I'm, you know, if you work, <laughs> work steadily and work hard, you know, be confident you're going to get the grades. Um, and what would just, I mean, you want, clearly you want to do as well in your current studies as you can and get the grades that sort of um, represent you and your efforts. Um, but maybe it's a chance to say something about um, how. The, the kind of students who succeed when they get here. We have students who come in who've um, got higher UCAS points than other students. Um, and when they're here, whatever U UCAS points a student came in with, it doesn't seem to matter at all. Uh, the students who do well when they come here are the students who fully engage in the course and throw themselves into every part of the course. So at the end of this year, we will have a top student in our third year who's graduating. Um, and some some years, the person who um, has been the top student at the end of year three 
is the person who came in in year one with the least number of UCAS points. It's happened a few times. So um, if you're a little bit nervous about how you're going to do in your studies at the moment, be confident and, you know, energy and enthusiasm and passion and commitment are huge. <laughs> they are what matter. So, uh, yeah, be, be optimistic and uh, hope, hopefully we can see Great. you next Thank year. you for that, Neil. I'm sure I, I know lots of people at that stage do worry about their grades and things like that. Um, so, yeah, I think it's definitely true that if you've got passion for the subject, uh, that kind of drives your enthusiasm. And that's what we see in your portfolio and things like that. So, uh, yeah, do bear that in mind and try not to be too worried. If anyone watching maybe doesn't feel like they're yet ready to do the portfolio in the full undergraduate program of any of these courses there is of course an art and design foundation course as well at dmu that kind of acts as similar to maybe a levels or college in terms of educational stage um, and if you do that at dmu you can kind of progress onto some of these um undergraduate courses in a maybe a little bit more of a streamlined way like i think you don't have necessarily have to use ucas and you kind of go about it a slight different way um, so that's just something as well just to mention to everyone but now we'll go on to our next question uh, this one is, if I wanted to go into digital arts for a cartoon type of style, would I need to focus much on other types of art styles, such as classical art? So this might be a question for you, Charlie. Yeah, so, oh, it's an interesting question. Um, I think that to choose an art style that you want to go into at this point might be a little too soon. And it would be a good idea to maybe go and do a foundation course like Laura just said or um, come and do a degree course like this where on the courses well certainly on graphics I'm not sure about um, comic that is pro the, probably the course that you're interested in the most but certainly on graphics you're pushed to explore lots of different areas because actually university is about exploring and making the most of having the opportunity to explore all of these different areas and all of these different um, mediums and styles that you'll be interested in. So if you want to include it in your portfolio, then please do by all means go ahead. Um, but yeah, show us a good range of styles that you're interested in and show us that you don't just have one thing that you're um, really, really focused on and that you're willing to explore and experiment with lots of other styles and um, in, you're inspired by, um, lots of other things like our architecture and typography and um, color and textiles and into, you know, you, you're a creative individual. That is the most important thing. Is that okay, Laura? Does that answer the question? Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Charlie, just for kind of covering that off. I think you're right. Some people um, might at this stage think that they're on a set path and they know what they want to do. But I think, you know, three years of an undergraduate program might open your eyes to all kinds of things that you didn't even think about um, before applying. So, yeah, I think it's like you said, it's good for that portfolio to show a bit of range because um, you never know what you might do next. Um, so the next question we have coming in is from Tia, who says, is a portfolio for a foundation course any different from an undergraduate course? So Andy, this might be one for you to cover as it kind of falls into that visual arts uh, aspect. Well, I think, strictly speaking, it, it falls into all our aspects in some ways because uh, a foundation um, in art and design um, is what it says. It's a basic foundational introduction into all the skills and abilities uh, that you'd need to go into a particular area um, in our faculty. Um, it often uh, involves um, a kind of deconstruction of assumptions that people have about how to do things. I remember the first thing I learned on a foundation course, much to my chagrin, was to how to hold a pencil, you know, and I still teach that to this very day. Um, and it also usually involves a, a, a bit of the course where you, you get to try out an area um, so it, it involves a diagnostic process to find out uh, which area of art and design you might want to go into next. So um, in our view, I think I can speak for most of us here. Um, if you have a chance to do a foundation, uh, I think you should take it if you can. Uh, very good. Um, because, of it, because it's foundational, the portfolio would be more general. So you need to show um, a, a range of potential. We wouldn't be expecting people 
to show fantastic levels of finish and ability at that stage. Um, but we would need someone that could show that they would have the potential to benefit from a foundation course. So, um, you know, it could it could be involved um, drawing very, very important. Uh, I think I, I wouldn't want to encourage anyone to do a foundation unless they can show some interest in observational drawing. Um, uh, it doesn't have to be life drawing. Some students do get a chance to do that uh, at schools, but, uh, but certainly you need to have an interest in the world, an interest in seeing things and, and looking at things um, and paying attention to things is, is key. Um, and you can do that through a whole range of different formats, you know, uh, but drawing is central. It might involve photography. It might involve uh, making notes or, or uh, analysing uh, uh, particular um, colour patterns, um, designs, um, showing um, a kind of what your interests are. Uh, so it, it's very like um, a kind of process we would have for our degree level subjects, but at a more general level. Um, I, I, I don't know, maybe maybe someone else on the team could, could add a bit to that. Uh, possibly because I know it's important. Yeah, does anyone else want to chip in on um, a foundation type portfolio? Because obviously a lot of people do a foundation and go into any number of your areas. Does anyone else have something to add on this? Yeah, Charlie. Um, I, I'm not really about the portfolio, but about the importance of art foundation. And if you're not sure which uh, degree subject you want to go into, um, foundation is an absolutely fantastic opportunity for you to discover um, or maybe just streamline that um, decision a little quicker. It's also an opportunity to, to explore and experiment with so many different materials and the course that we have here is absolutely fantastic, absolutely fantastic. So it's just um, to encourage you to investigate that if you're unsure, that, but that's it, thank you. Great, thank you for that, Charlie. Yeah, I know a lot of people um, initially apply to an undergraduate course and they hear about the foundation and they decide they want to do that first to kind of help them uh, decide what their next steps are. So yeah, I definitely agree to everyone watching. Um, you might already be doing something similar in our design sort of foundation course already, but if not, that is definitely something to consider. Uh, right, on to our next question. This is from Stella, so another one for Neil. Uh, how would you suggest going... She might mean doing no, going about photography for an architecture portfolio, given that I can't travel to architecture that would be interesting to photograph. Um, so, Neil, obviously, you're in this new lockdown situation. So, yeah, yeah. I guess how would you recommend uh, that side of things? I'll, I'll assume from your question that when you say I can't travel, you're talking about traveling, you know, far, you know, traveling to another city or another town to look at significant architecture. But I'm assuming that's what you mean. Um, um, I mean, don't assume that we mean we want you to photograph significant, famous buildings. Uh, you know, it could be your um, your supermarket. And then, you know, it could be your school. It could be the houses that you live amongst. Um, and we're more interested in how you photograph, you know, how you show us how you think about architecture in the photographs. Um, one thing about architecture is you you experience it when you move you know you move through architecture you don't you don't stand and look at it forever you move you approach a building you enter a building you move through a building uh, and even doing a series of photographs about how you've you've approached and moved through and enjoyed a building would be um would be interesting regardless of the quality of the building um, you're not being judged on the quality of the building. You're being judged on how, as as Andy was saying, how carefully you look and observe and capture that in a photograph. Um, we want, uh, we as I said at the beginning, we have a really wide variety of um, portfolios. And previously, when we actually saw portfolios face to face, um, I once had somebody turn up who had a portfolio for architecture which was just photographs they had nothing else and and the student apologized before opening up their portfolio and I was a little bit concerned because I'm thinking I need to see some drawing um but this young man's photographs were so fabulous and so um de they demonstrated such a, a careful thinking about buildings um and I gave him a pencil and said draw something on the paper here in the interview and he 
enjoy something quite decent actually but um you know the photographs can tell a story um very very well so be careful and considerate about what photographs you take but don't worry about what you're photographing could be could be about the ugliness of a something locally i don't know hope that helps that's great thank you neil uh yeah buddy did you want to add something to this oh i think neil's making a really good uh point um talking about lockdown has uh, really made us consider our surroundings um and for instance uh one of the things that i've been talking to my students about was um I'll ask them about what fibre they're going to use. And they'll say, oh, I know nothing about uh, fibres or I know nothing about materials. But actually, we are all surrounded by the subjects we're studying and teaching. And in fact, I was thinking even a little project to do uh, the textures and the fabrics and the fibres as you walk, maybe from where you sleep through to where you eat, looking at everything that carries on. And it might even be the iron mesh of a sieve right through to your carpets and your curtains the clothes you're wearing and maybe you know the the fabrics that some of the furniture is made out of so I, th I think the students have been really really imaginative in lockdown and actually it's really made them think about their environment and some of the detail and you know why is that fiber suitable for a, a carpet and why is that fiber suitable you know for curtains or for clothes or you know is it itchy is it smooth is it is it natural is it synthetic um so I think Neil's uh advice is really good um don't think you need big fancy surroundings you you definitely do not i'd love to see some really small observations but observations in depth which is really what andy was talking about right at the beginning that's great thank you buddy just for mm. adding to that uh, we're approaching the last few minutes of the live stream now but we will do our best to answer all of your questions i know some of our panel do have to leave at six so you might see some of us disappearing but we will stick around to answer um, any questions that you have left um, and on that i've just seen that fergus mentioned he submitted a question when he booked onto the live stream uh, apologies i don't think i have that near me that question that you did submit so if you just want to retype that uh, then we can answer that for you if you just want to let us know what your question was um but before getting on to that we do have another question from i think it's leo so Leo has asked for art and design courses that require an interview like game art, how will applicants showcase their physical portfolio given the interviews will be online? Do these pieces have to be photographed? So Charlie, I don't know if you can kind of touch on this. I know it's sort of your area, um, but you might not be able to give all the specifics. So I don't know the answer to that specific question, Leo. I apologize, um, but I will endeavor to find out uh, the answer and let you know as soon as I can. So I'll, uh, yeah, I don't know, I'll get your contact details somehow from this and uh, get that answer to you as soon as I can. Sorry. <laughs> no worries, Charlie. I didn't realise uh, you might not be able to answer that one. But yes, in, in terms of your question there, Leo, also feel free to email um, inquiry yeah. at dmu.ac.uk or just generally Google DMU contact. Oh, there we go. We've got it on screen. So there's chem, C-E-M, at dmu.ac.uk. Uh, that's an email address you can contact where your question will be picked up and we'll get an answer for you. So apologies for not being able to answer that uh, just now. Sorry, Buddy, did you have your hand up to add I, something? I was only going to say, I think one of the real advantages of uh, of lockdown has been um, we've seen students become far more adept at creating digital portfolios, which, you know, in this age when we're going to be working and particularly our students work abroad and are going to have to communicate globally. I mean, you know, this is... British designers are renowned or British trained designers are renowned for their international presence. Um, that's something that you could certainly think about before Christmas is how would you create your portfolio so that it can be both physical and digital because um, you may well have to send it across the world if there's exciting interviews and job opportunities abroad. Um, so I think I would see that as a real opportunity um, it's not a disadvantage at all. And actually we've all been marking online, we've been doing online tutorials. Um, it's actually um, created some really interesting opportunities and we're getting very positive feedback from the students. So yes, an advantage I would say. 
Great. Thank you, Buddy, uh, just for adding to that. So we will be wrapping up soon, but I've just seen a, a question come in that I'd like us to answer. Um, so it might be another one for you, Charlie, about anything unique for a comic and concept art portfolio compared to some of the others. So you might have touched on this earlier, but is there anything else you can kind of add to this? Um, so the comic and concept art portfolio, so that's a relatively new course. Um, so again, I would just make sure that you have your um, personality. So it's not unique to that course in particular, but make sure that you have your um, personality, like you've changed your avatar on your um, on here now. So show us more of that. We want to see who you are. Um, show us your digital skills and your um, traditional drawing skills. and. I think it's clear that you're passionate about your subject from your avatar. So carry on that way um, and yeah, you'll be okay. Great, thank you for that, Charlie. Um, so we are approaching the end of the live stream, but again, there's just been a couple more questions. I think Fergus has now uh, sent in his question that he originally uh, asked on the booking form. So, Fergus has asked, in my course, I've been focusing heavily on 3D modeling, sorry, and sculpting side of game development. I do have a small amount of traditional artwork, but nowhere near as much. Is that an issue? Um, so again, maybe Charlie, this is a question for you. So again, um, this isn't a course that I teach on. However, I would see that that probably isn't uh, an issue. And um, I, I think it would be better to investigate this question again further with somebody who's from the course. But I would say that just, just well, just to reiterate, anything that you're extremely passionate about needs to go into your portfolio. So, if you have a lot of three D modeling, because that's what you're interested in, then that's that's perfect. Put that put that in. Make sure that definitely goes in. And if there's a lot of it because that's what you enjoy doing, then that's excellent because that's going to show the tutors exactly what you're interested in um, and what you have great skill at. So I wouldn't worry too much about the traditional artwork, but there will just be aware that there will be traditional drawing as part of the course. And um, there, we do have a drawing centre and a, a drawing school um, as part of the library that it's likely that you will uh, interact with the um, fantastic tutors that are there that teach um, and encourage you to, to draw traditionally. It's, it's fantastic. It's really, really good. But yeah, if, if you're proud of something, put it in your portfolio. If there's loads of it, that means you're excited about it and that's great. So yeah, don't worry too much. I'm sure it's amazing. That's great. Thank you, Charlie. And I think, uh, again, it's in the uh, on the screen now that if you do have any specific questions about some of the courses aside from graphic design, which Charlie teaches, then you can email chem, that's C-E-M, at dmu.ac.uk and we'll put you in touch uh, with anyone relevant. But I think that's now the end of our live stream for today. Um, so thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and you found this helpful. Um, as we've mentioned, there's lots of different ways to get in touch. If you do have any questions, we will either pass them on to our academics or the people uh, who receive your emails will do their best to answer you as well. Of course, we also have digital open days coming up in November and December that you can book onto um, on the websites if you want more course info, more chances to ask questions um, about your courses to academics and students and do book onto an open day and you'll find out some information there. Um, but thank you all of the panel for joining us today. I think you gave some really helpful advice and to everyone watching at home, have a great rest of your evening and we hope Hope to see you soon. Bye.